Thank you for being in with us. Um, as I, as uh, we're getting started here, we're going to go ahead and roll through. We may experience some difficulties here because we are trying a new video switching system. Uh, we just upgraded and improved our Blackmagic design switching system, so we're we're working towards using that. And uh, so, if we do have some technical issues, no worries. We're going to go ahead and record this, and we'll be able to put it up on our YouTube and Facebook page a little bit later on. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is LUTs, or what are called look up tables. Lookup tables are something that have traditionally been only available in fairly high-end cameras until just the last few years. And one of the things that we really appreciate about the Autel camera line or the Autel drones is that they do have a log format that we can use to shoot in. Now I've seen online some people say, well, wow, when I shoot in log it's kind of black and white, it, 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 there's no color to it, there's no life, what am I doing wrong? Well that actually is the whole purpose of shooting to log. It's a logarithmic uh, format that allows us to do more with the picture in post. And so that's the really important thing about working with log, is log then allows us to import what are called lookup tables in a variety of different film looks. Now we are familiar with, or we can go to, let me, uh, I'm going to go right here to the, the Autel Facebook, or uh, Autel website here. So this is the Autel website, and we can go into the, uh, the website and go to the, the LUT page. Uh, so if we go to the Autel website and we go to the uh, the LUT page, so autel.com forward slash pages forward slash LUT, lookup table, and here you'll see that we can download a variety of different LUTs uh, for the different aircraft that we have out there. Um, so you want to be sure that you download the correct lookup tables for your particular aircraft. If you download the wrong one, don't worry about it, it just won't have the right look, so it won't have all the looks you might want to have access to. So again, what does this really mean? Well, if we shoot in log mode, it creates a, a uh, less dynamic image in the recording that allows us significantly greater latitude when it comes time to process that recording. So let's have a look at what that looks like overall. Let me call up, uh, here we're going to use a tool called Magix Vegas. And this uh, used to be a Sony product. It was made for Sony professional editors, but um, it's now owned by a company called Magix. If you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. Yes, we do edit in Premiere, we edit in Final Cut, we edit in Avid and Black Magic uh, Resolve. However, for purposes of demonstrating, I frequently use Vegas because of its real-time capabilities. So here's some footage that we acquired this morning. Some of you may have seen it uh, earlier today on um, on our Facebook, whoops, and I've had just a moment there. Here's some footage that we acquired early this morning. Some of you may have seen it on the Facebook page. Uh, this is very early in the morning prior to sunrise. So I'm going to take this footage here and I'm going to bring it down to the timeline. And we'll go and tell, and, uh, tell it that we're going to output uh, in HD as opposed to outputting in uh, 4K or in this case 6K. And we're going to go through and, and uh, make sure that our, our output is properly set up here. Okay, currently it's set up for what's called upper field first. We want to make sure this is all progressive scan. There we go. Okay, so if we look at this footage here and we, we view it uh, full screen, it's pretty, um, it, it's got some noise and it's pretty dull overall. There's not a whole lot that's happening in that image. So the first thing that we're going to do is, and, and this works the same way in Premiere or any other type of a, a tool, is we're going to go in and apply um, an effect to it. In this particular case, we're going to go to our media effects, we're going to go in and tell it that we want to use our LUT filter. So we've now applied a LUT filter. This is pretty common in all of these different tools. We need to go find the LUT file that matches it. And this is going to be the .cube or .cube file that you downloaded from the uh, website over at autelpages.com. Uh, so we're going to go in here. And here we can see Autel 2 Pro, Autel Evo 2 Pro, uh, Autel Log, 
and it says Rec 709. Rec 709 is a color space in the broadcast industry. We're going to open that or apply that, and as soon as we do, you immediately saw that change that occurred in the picture. Now we want to change its interpolation in this particular case to what's called tetrahedral or best. Now we can turn that on and off or can control the amount of strength that's there, but as soon as we apply that LUT, now this is not color correction. It's pretty important to point out that this is not a color correction tool. All this is doing is applying chroma information to the image that we caught or that we captured in the lower dynamic range. So we start here and from here we can start to apply other types of color grading tools. So let's have a look at what that looks like um, without the color grade one more, or rather without the, uh, the lookup table applied to it one more time. So here we can do it. A we can take it away a couple of different ways. The first way we can do it is to remove the strength, and now we're back to the picture. But I don't want to keep doing that. What I do want to be able to do, though, is keep going back and forth and seeing what it looks like with and without it. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see it without the lookup table. Over here on the right-hand side, we can see it with the lookup table. The next thing we want to do is, because of the, the type of content it, it is, let's look at it at, at uh, full or best auto in this particular case. So it's going to give us a better image. Of, of what our picture is going to look like. So now let's look at that on an external monitor or a large full, full screen. You can see it's cleaned itself up quite a bit in the overall picture. And again, you know, we can kind of decide where we want to see that if we want to zero in on particular areas. Go back to full screen here so you can get an idea of what's there. Great. All right, now we can start applying some color grading. So let's turn off that, that piece that's there. Uh, the first thing that I always do is I go in and I look at my waveform monitors. And if you're not familiar with, with how those waveform monitors work, uh, I'm going to recommend that at some point in time you learn how to look at your video scopes or use your video scopes. So if we go back through here and we turn off our effects, or rather we, we turn off the, uh, the overall look, There you go. You can see how very little uh, informa information we have here. There's almost nothing there. Let's pull it back to what it was. Now we've got quite a bit more information. Well, generally from here, I'm just going to start applying some contrast and some other color correction tools. So for the sake of speed, let's go through a couple really quickly here. So I'm going to just uh, move my video scopes down here to the corner. Um, and we'll start looking at some of the different effects that we have here. And it'll take just a second to show up on my window. One of the things to know about when we are dealing with these kinds of effects or when we're dealing with, with effect tools like these is that um, whenever we shoot in a LUT, it's going to be much, much heavier on our processor. And we'll be talking about that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and add curves to my, my uh, shot. And then I'm going to add a color corrector to my shot. There we go. Now here in curves, I'm just going to work with it a little bit. To, it, it's adding some artificial light because of the, the settings of the, the table there. So let's pull this down just a little bit. And that's going to help us reduce some of our noise. And then we're going to pull this curve right here at the top end just a little bit. We can see in our video scope or what's happening down here. I'm going to also look at my, uh, my waveform monitor at the same time just so I can get an idea of what's going on. And then let's go to our color corrector tool. And in the color corrector tool, and you've seen these a, a number of different ways, but the primary thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the saturation just a little bit because this particular lookup table has too much saturation to it. It also, I'm going to shift the gamma down just a little bit. So why am I shifting the, why am I shifting the gamma down? Anytime we're dealing with an MPEG source, be it H.264 or H.265, chances are that the gamma is tuned for a different type of subject matter than we're typically shooting with drones. This has always been a problem with all formats of aerial photography because of the amount of information we have in the sky, etc. And these smaller cameras are generally tuned to give a, an artificially blue sky. So this is one of the reasons why we go in and, and we're going to shift that gamma down just a little bit. Depending on the camera, we're going to drop it as much as 20% so we can pull that down by quite a bit. Um, with the case of the Autel cameras, we're usually dropping it by 4, 5, 10% at the very most in order to work with that gamma shift. So in fact, I'm going to move this gamma back and forth just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. 
So as we shift that gamma down, if we take it too far down, you can see we can really bring out the more of the natural look. This is actually what it looked like where we were. So it's popping quite a bit of information into the, the shot. Here is just about where things are natural. And then from here, I can start tuning a little bit. So I think I'm just going to tweak some of those oranges just a tiny, tiny bit. And that gets us into our shot. Now I can set this up to play through. The problem is, is I'm trying to play 4K at full resolution, so it's probably not going to work very well. So we're just going to go in and we'll shift up our, our resolution here and go to Preview Auto. So we're using a little less RAM. And here we're getting a much better view. And let's turn off the, uh, the live view of our, our scopes there. So here you get a pretty good idea of, of what, what we're actually doing with it overall. I've just set it up here in, into a loop and play. All right. So when do we use a LUT? Well, anytime you're going to be matching other cameras. If you're working with uh, a producer who's shooting on, say, a Sony A7, or maybe you're all the way up to a, a RED or, or one of the larger camera systems, you're always going to want to shoot in log mode if we're going to be matching other cameras. So when don't we shoot in log mode? Let's not shoot in log mode if we're not going to be doing significant color grading with it. Log allows us a tremendous amount of options in post-production. The problem is, is that using log mode, it allows us a lot of options in post-production. What do I mean by that? Well, whenever we use that log mode, we are going to be rewriting or resampling every single pixel in that image. So if we're shooting at 6K or we're shooting at 8K or even at 4K, we're resampling a lot of pixels. What does that mean? Well, at the end of the day, it means it really slows your processor down quite a bit, which makes your render take an awful long time. So the first time we're not going to use log is if we don't intend to do a whole lot of color grading. The second time we don't use log is if we need a quick turnaround. If we've got something that's the same day edit or something that needs to go out fairly quickly, log is not your answer. What I recommend instead is going into the Autel Explorer and tuning and tweaking the camera to make it look the best that you can make it look for your particular need. For those of you that are using the EVO 2 Pro or the EVO 2, I do recommend that you go in and you drop your sharpness by a value of at least one and maybe two stops or two settings, and that will give you a little smoother picture. Some of you have reported online you're seeing marching ants or aliasing in the image. This is very, very common with small format cameras because uh, a lot of times sharpness is increased because they're generally focused on human faces and, and that kind of a thing. But with drones, we're never really that close close to our subject, and so we don't need that kind of, of sharpening. It actually harms us more than it actually helps us. Now, last but not least, I want to show you a couple of other things you can do in log mode. So I'm going to switch back up here to the uh, internet, and we're going to go out and just real quick go to a couple different places. Here's a location called Small HD, and on the Small HD website, you will be able to find any number of lookup tables that can be used. Now, these lookup tables are actually designed, or these LUTs are designed to be used with their monitors. But they, the, the uh, images that you're looking at here in front of you are some of the looks that they give you, or the way that they've changed up these particular images that you're seeing in the, on the screen here. So what does that mean? Well, when, we're, when we use that lookup table on a small monitor, it allows us to see what we might do with the picture in post. So the camera is recording in log mode, but our eyes are seeing what the lookup table will do to that image when we apply it in post. So this is kind of a way of, of being able to bake chocolate chip cookies, but after they've come out of the oven, we can take out the chocolate chips and the nuts and the flour and the eggs and the sugar. So we can separate things in post while we have a pretty good idea of what it's going to take tastes like or what it's going to feel like before we bake it. So this is a great way to save time and figure out particular looks for different kinds of films. And this is how lookup tables are predominantly used in the industry, is to get an idea of how our picture is going to look when we process it or when we grade it and then eventually time it in post. So this is what lookup tables are. Uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of, of how to use these lookup tables in your Evo, your Auto Evo Explorer. Um, thanks for tuning in and until next time, uh, we'll see you either on the Facebook channel or we'll see you on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, folks.